Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Today I am going to do a video on my alocasia care as far as not getting spider mites on my alocasia. I have quite a number of alocasia that I have amassed in the time that I have been collecting them. And one of the biggest things that scare me about alocasia is definitely the fact that they are spider mite magnets. But they are prone to spider mites, thrips, and mealybugs from what I understand. But the biggest thing that um, I have experienced in the past with them is, oh, and gnats. The biggest thing that I have experienced is spider mites on my alocasia. And I'm going to tell you how I've all but eradicated that problem in my collection. Not that they're not there because in my opinion, I have alocasia, spider mites love them, they are there. Normally when you see spider mites, there's little webbing everywhere, but that's when there's an extreme situation. The way I have stopped them from wreaking havoc on my collection is by assuming that these spider mites are always there. They are extremely small and so it's when they're in large numbers that you get to see them. I will tell you from the beginning, I watched the Leafy Divas video on her alocasia care where she uses a feather duster to um, just constantly brush her plants. And she said she has reduced the effects of the spider mites and 100% that has been working for me. I have not, I haven't seen a single spider mite, any clusters of spider mites on my plants since I started doing that. And it really motivated me to be in a position to just like not feel afraid to collect more alocasia. So today I'm going to show you on three different examples of my alocasia, the plants that give me the most trouble in identifying pests on them when it comes to my alocasia care. And there are different features of each one of them, but this will apply to all of them and really to my entire collection. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this video. There will be a shared item in this video a little bit later because we're talking about pest control. And so the Coquit company was so sweet. They shared something else with me and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So please keep watching till the end. Okay, so the supplies that I'm going to be using on my plants are my weapon of choice against this on this fight is going to be my pure Castile soap. And this is the Dr. Bronner's and it's the peppermint. Peppermint is known to be something that pests don't like, and so we give tons of this right here. The other things that I use are my Mrs. Myers. This is the Compassion Flower. It's not my favorite scent, but I had never smelled it before, and so I gave it a try. The Gardenia and the Rose are my very favorite, but this one right here still does the job. When we had ants in our house downstairs in our kitchen, the, every single spring they came, this is what got rid of them. When I started using the Mrs. Myers all around my doors, around my sink area, and around my windows, the ants stopped coming in. Any place I saw evidence of them, I would just spray them, spray it down with this stuff. Whatever natural oils are in here gets rid of them. And so I use this on all of my pots, curtains, and walls around my plants. And I'm sorry, Marshmallow is barking a lot now because the neighbor's dogs are outside. And from where he's standing, He's like the big dog on campus, you know, settling things with them. <laughs> okay, the other thing that I use in between is my leaf shine because keeping the leaves nice and shiny and free from dust is huge when it comes to preventing any kind of pests. Okay, the other things are my tools. This is my duster. This is a synthetic duster. Now with this right here, I use it and I will go through and I will just dust off my plant. But before I do that, what I do when I'm done with it, I shake it out really well and I will spray a little bit of my leaf shine on it and I will take just a little bit of this, put it all over my hands and put it all over my duster and it will be dry. But the coating of this in the leaf shine, the next time I go to dust will just be put onto the plant. So it does make it a little bit sticky, but that's what I want. I want it to be a little bit sticky so I'm not just throwing, the, I'm just not, um, uh, I'm not just dusting it everywhere. And it was Carlos who told me that he was using the combination of these, but he doesn't do this anymore. From the last time I saw him talk about this, he doesn't do this anymore. He doesn't think it's effective for his collection. So that's something else for you to take into consideration. 
but for my collection, it is working. But he did give me that tip and it has been working for me. <laughs> the other thing I use is a makeup brush. And this is a foundation brush that is the dual tip. This is for stippling. So it has the white tips that come a little bit longer than the dense black tips. And this I use to get into crevices. And I'll get into that when I get to more of the plants. All of that being said, <laughs> let's start with the plants. These plants all need to be watered. This is watering day. You see a bunch of plants behind me that look so sad. I have a new watering system that I'm going to be implementing because they're so sad. But um, this tiny dancer alocasia, this whimsical plant is one of the favorite of my alocasia collection because it's so different. But spider mites tend to flock to this plant because if you look closely, let's look at this one right here. You see that little cup in there? that is where they tend to collect. And so what I do is I either take, oh, I left my other brush. I forgot to bring my other brush that I used to clean this and it's so important, but I'll use, I'm going to show you what I used in the beginning when I started doing this process. And that is a Q-tip. What I do is I take, I'm not going to use the soap right now only because I have to be able to rinse it off afterward. I'm just going to dust a little bit of my leaf shine on. And what I do is instead of waiting until there is webbing inside of here, I take my Q-tip and I just go like that to all of the leaves. And I just twirl it around in there. And what it does is it prevents, I think I need to bring you a little closer. So what this does is it prevents the spider mites from having any kind of a place where they can start to germinate and do anything bad. And so I just go right into the crevices and what you do when you put something in there, it's, this is very gentle, and the, but the one that I use on a regular basis is actually a paintbrush and it has a little bit of a long tip. I left it downstairs. I'll try to show that, show you exactly the brush that I use, but I just put it right in there with just a little bit of moisture on it. And I do this after I've washed the plants because I don't want to leave a pool of anything in there, but you just leave a little bit of a residue. And so it's not inviting for the spider mites. And so that's what I do. I just put that in there and that's how I clean the inside. But when it comes to washing this plant, Look at how little I'm using. You see this? Now I'm going to take it, emulsify it with the water, and then I just go over the plant. And this is for each thorough wash day. I have a wash day for my alocasia, for all of my plants where they are just watered in place and they just get a dusting. But when they are being watered, and they are being thoroughly cleaned with, this is what I do. And this is just to stay on top of anything that could possibly be gathering on my plant. So now that I've gone through and I've washed all of these leaves, what I will do, let me just water the plant. Okay, so once you've cleaned out each well of each one of the, the leaves, you just wash it off. I usually let it sit for just a little while. I don't wash it off right away. I just let it sit for a little while because I want it to leave a lasting impression. <laughs> but I just rinse them off and I make sure that I give it a little soft um, scrub with my hands. And this is the style of brush that I use. See that brush, the tip of that brush? That's what I use. I can use a Q-tip, but I like to use something that, is, that I can reuse and reuse and reuse. And so I just have my tools that way. So that is how I take care of my, my tiny dancer. And I will thoroughly just like wipe down all of the stems because you have to wipe down the stems. And then after that, I take my Mrs. Myers and I just wipe down the pot just to be sure that there's nothing that is like living, especially with the terracotta, you have to be very careful. So this plant right here, I am actually not done with because I have to thoroughly just like spray this down in the shower. Right now, my shower is full, so I can't do anything about it right now. But I'm going, but this one is all set just to be thoroughly rinsed. Okay, so this is going to be the share portion of my video where I am going to show you something that the Co-Kit Company shared with me and I would like to be able to show to you and share with you. This is their new and improved 
black catcher gear insect trap guys i shared this product with you a number of times this is i can only tell you that if you have a plant collection and you are dealing with gnats and bugs this works okay <laughs> it works i don't know what else to tell you i think that it works in a way that you don't really know that you have gnats until you real you have them all collected someplace now i'm going to show you the one that i have this model that I'm showing you today is the new and improved model of this one. This is the indoor outdoor model. And I, again, I've shared this with you, but they sent me the updated version. It's new and improved. And in my opinion, this was already perfect, <laughs> but this is what I use. And I am going to tell you that I love this thing. I run them all the time. And whereas I don't have a gnat problem, I noticed that when I would look inside the box, I'm like, wow, there were gnats in here. So I'm really happy that I have this. So I'm going to show you the new one. And it is basically the very same model, but it is new and improved. This is what it looks like. It looks like it's a little bit taller. I will say that. Let's compare the two. Yes, it is. The um, catcher basket is just a little bit taller. And this one is like a really nice grayish kind of black color. That is nice. Ooh, <laughs> I love this. I really do. Mosquito trap in black. This is so cool. It has a low and high fan. It has a 12 hour heat, um, a 12 hour setting. There is a light that comes on. I will show you how it looks when it's all lit up. This thing is awesome. And I am so thankful to the Coke Hit Company for sharing this product with me. I've worked with them a couple of times in the past, and it, it is just such a compliment to me that they trusted me with their product again. And I do hope you guys have enjoyed the shares that I've had with this product because it works, okay? <laughs> it really works. It comes with the little um, sticky traps that you put inside of the catcher area so that the gnats go in and they get stuck to this. There is a cleaning brush, the power cord, and then there is a little hook so that you can hang this from a tree if you'd like to use it outside. And then of course, it comes with the instructions on how to operate your item. So if you would like to, if you are interested in this shared item, I would love for you just to let me know down below. I will wait until next week on Thursday and I will choose one person to receive this model right here. So I'm putting it right back into the box. I'm not going to confuse it with mine. I love mine, so I'm not going to confuse it with mine. <laughs> but this will be going to one of you. And I know, I already know you're going to enjoy it because if you have plants, you need a catcher. <laughs> I will put all of the information for this product down below. And once again, thank you so much to the Coke Kit Company for sharing this product with us for today. The challenge that I have with plants is with deep grooves this plant this is a alocasia nebula that's what it is <laughs> this is the alocasia nebula and this plant is absolutely gorgeous it is very firm very tough but it has a lot of texture if you look at this plant you can see that it has grooves and texture in the same way the um, allocation mellow they both have a lot of texture let me just show you the allocation mellow just so that you can see exactly what I'm working and I actually should have used this as the example anyway simply because this is by far the most textured allocation that I have look at the gorgeousness of that leaf first of all <laughs> But look at all of the texture and it's very rough. There are little bumps on here. It's almost, it almost feels a little bit scaly. This plant is gorgeous. And you see, I have one nail polish, one nail that's polished. I was trying to determine which nail polish color I wanted. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'll get better, I promise. <laughs> anyway, this right here has the most texture on all of my plants, but this one doesn't need to be watered right now. And so I didn't use this as the example. But to say the least, if you have a plant like this, you have to get into all of those nooks and crannies. Otherwise, it will just be a breeding ground. It'll be a little highway. Each one of these little grooves will be highways for the spider mites to just start eating or any other pest for that matter. So for this plant, again, 
I still use the same process of taking this on my hands and I wipe down each and every one. I just give it a little bubble bath. This is what I do. And you can see that it's front and back that is being handled. And you just make sure you get all of the crevices because this is usually the area where they like the area where they really like to get is right in here, but that's usually where they set up their shop with their webbing and everything. But you want to make sure you get all of the edges. Oh, wow. That is a place where I used to see them all the time is on the edges. And I only put a couple of drops into my hand, but you see how much that's doing. This is a way of cleaning your plants that will really, really, really be easy because you don't really have to go out and do much by a really big container. And it cost me about $10 and I'll get tons of use out of this if I'm only using it on my plants anyway, which I don't. <laughs> so what I do is I just go over it and I just continue to wet down the area and then, okay, you just go over the stems. Make sure you get those stems. And this is in a cover pot. So I just like to make sure I get everything. Okay. And this right here definitely needs to be watered. And so I'm going to let it sit for just a little while. I usually let it sit for about a minute or two and then I rinse it off. But in that time, I'm going to show you my last example. This is second only to the Tiny Dancer and the Stingray when it comes to getting spider mites. And that is my Alocasia Amazonica or my Alocasia Poly. This plant used to get spider mites all the time. I've gone through so many of these plants because they would get spider, spider mites. But since I started using this very same system, I have not had a problem. Now, when you look at this one, the reason why this one is such a challenge is because the leaves are so dark. It is easy for a pest to be on here and for you not to detect it. The front of the leaves are gorgeous and dark. The backs of the leaves are gorgeous and dark. Very easy not to spot any kind of a predator on here that's eating up your plant. So again, you just give her a nice little shower. And you just make sure you get in, in those lobe areas and you get the edges of the plants because sometimes what you'll see, I actually saw it on someone's video once where they, the spider mites had set up in these waves over here. So you want to make sure that you are really, really, really focusing on that. And this is not a big, heavy handed kind of a thing. This is something delicate because you don't want to have any problems ripping your leaves and things like that because I've definitely done that. Okay. And so you would just go through all of the leaves and make sure you get them front and back and all of the stems. And that is how I make sure I don't have them. But then in between, I go in with my little brush and I'm going to show you what I do. I'm just going to take some more of the soap off of my hands and you just this is a nice soft brush and look at that and on my plants with more texture the brush is perfect and again I'm not adding any product to this I just added a little bit of water to emulsify the soap and you can get right up at the, um, the base of the stem and it's perfect And again, with the amount of alocasia that I have in my collection, you would really think that I was like drowning in spider mites, but I'm not. So this right here is a very gentle soap. And again, you're not using this full strength. I'm not adding anything else to it. And as it stands, it is not taking off the barrier on the plant. It is just preventing. And again, right now they're getting more than they normally get simply because I'm doing a video for you. I don't let this sit on for more than an hour, a minute, a minute and a half. I don't let this sit on very long. Today they're getting more. Hopefully they'll be okay. <laughs> but I really wanted to show you exactly how I take care of them so that they don't have pests. Because it makes no sense to bring plants into the home that just end up giving you so many problems. 
So there you have it. This is my care for my plants to keep them pest free and happy for all of my alocasia. I hope this information was helpful to you. And if you did find it useful, please remember to give me a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. And if you're just here just to watch a video, I appreciate you as well. So please don't feel any kind of way about that. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.